Last week, I had bought Tekken 8. I have been loving it. Like, I'm going through the story mode, I'm playing through, like, different characters. I'm maining June after Tekken Tag 2 for so long. Like, I am having... I'm having a good time with it. Alright? And I, I like the game. Like, it's, te it's Tekken, and it's absolutely, like, peering into my nostalgia. I'm having a great time with it. And I don't want to let that go unheard. As time has gone on, I have heard some things even before I bought it. So, let me give a breakdown. Game Awards 2023. Here an announcement for Tekken 8. Not really excited. It's like, it's Tekken, it's just like, hey. I mean, Tekken you? 8 looks like Tekken. <laughs> Fair, fair. <laughs> There's not really much going on there. I was actually really impressed with the look at story mode in Street Fighter 6 and like the character thing. My only concern <laughs> is that it does basically the same thing that every fighting game thing does where they just stick other characters animations on you and you can like mix and match. Yeah, personally for me, uh, like, I love Tekken, I'm a fan of Tekken, personally, uh, due to my, uh, how Tekken 7 was handled, on top of that, Sony's fucking paywall towards online membership, yeah, I'm not, I'm not buying another Tekken, sadly. I'd love to, but, um... I mean, Tekken, Tekken came out on PC, didn't it? I think Tekken 7 came out on PC, it's just that I don't have a PC to run it. Ah, that's fair. Not being able to play online is sort of what killed my enjoyment for the game. Then I got the Steam Deck, and then I realized, oh wait, I actually have Tekken 7 on PC. I just never played it because my PC was garbage towards it. So I boot up Tekken 7 on my Steam Deck, works perfectly fine. And I'm having a good time. I, I'm back in what made, I'm back in like why a lot, now I like Tekken nowadays, honestly. I'm back, I'm back in the groove. So now this is getting me excited for Tekken 8. But, ultimately, I don't have the money for Tekken 8. So, I'm, I'm hearing things here and there. Some things come up. Or just, like, stuff that I try, that I, I really didn't want to happen. But it's just, like, I try to give the benefit of the doubt. Or, at the very least, I try to ignore it. But it came to a point where it's just, like, there's some stuff with Tekken 8 where it's just, like, I can't ignore this. Dude, we want DLC costumes for this game. Where are they? Why aren't you putting them into the game? We kind of saw the exact same thing recently happen with Street Fighter 6, where SF6 is like, hey, we're finally putting costumes in the game. And people are just like, you dumbasses, we don't want this freak show costumes. We want character costumes. People are actually weirdly screaming and like wondering where the hell the DLC is. Who said that? Buddy, as somebody that covered Tekken since the beginning, and as Tekken 7, a game that really didn't get a whole bunch of additional DLC outside of just like seasonal stuff. Yes, people complained about that. People complained that there was no like classic costumes that you could add to the game from older games and stuff. It was an active complaint from the user base for a long period of time. And also, when are you adding more customization items? People bitched about it for years. Tekken Fight Pass, I've played like matches against Kenny and Steve a couple of times. I've barely played online at all in over a month. So what the hell is this? The idea behind this is that you have to play the game in order to level up. And just like any battle pass, even myself who has barely ever bought a battle pass in games for the most part, to be real, I think I've purchased two. One was for Rumbleverse and one was for very early Street Fighter VI. And as soon as I realized, oh, the Street Fighter VI one doesn't give me anything for my characters, I kind of just stopped doing it. There is a very stark similarity between this and Street Fighter in many ways. The first one being, what the hell are, are these things? Like, why is nothing actually really good? That's my first criticism. Not even like the value and worth of it, because it's like, what, five bucks or something like that? Uh, it's six bucks. The criticism I think overall between both of these games is that the rewards in themselves don't feel that great. As you look through this stuff, many of the customization items as you go through here are just things that were also in Tekken uh, 7. And I swear to God, this is a Tekken 7 costume. I swear to God. It might have obviously some updates, obviously some, some little things here and there. But the, 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 the similarity between Street Fighter and, I'm sorry, Street Fighter 6 and this is that, yeah, the rewards aren't like that good it overall feels relatively like low effort all i'm saying is that like it feels like relatively low effort i don't feel like this is what people would be looking for from a battle pass in, in a fighting game but even the premium stuff that's in here doesn't really feel like it's absolutely worth it no like brand new skin or something like that for like a main character that's relegated to this stuff right 
where you actually do get brand new costumes on characters which are separate costs. You confirm that the battle pass itself costs 600 coins, right? So let's buy 600 coins. Oh, it's the same problem. So this is just a common practice, like we have have explained, that goes all the way back to the Xbox 360. You have to spend $10 to spend $6. <laughs> Man. So that's what they're doing. They want you to buy the battle pass and have enough money left over to get a costume. I absolutely see, but it's like not ideal, dude. This does not build like a good faith. Right, already. I feel like when Tekken 7 was going on and people were asking for more content in, in the form of like costume DLC, more customization items, it was something that was effectively welcomed in games like Soul Calibur just because Soul Calibur's customization has always been, you know, a huge part of it. And it was like, we're adding things over time. And it's like, okay, people kind of were okay with that shit, even in Soul Calibur 5. It is neat that we're getting costumes for characters. I think that is relatively okay. But what the hell is going on with Battle Pass Chief? Deepness in fighting games. I don't get it. It's like everyone wants to dabble in and try this thing, but as soon as they do, but we don't want to put that much effort into it. And interestingly enough, it's stuff that I didn't even know about until I went looking for it. Tekken 8, for the first time I think of Tekken's history, has decided to ultimately go for a battle pass and microtransactions. The free-to-play approach, essentially. I'd be more surprised if they didn't do that because, you know, it's Bandai Namco. They want more money. I didn't really let it bother me because it's cosmetic shit, you know? Like, it's... It's like giving skins, like, new color skins and everything to someone who... To someone who, like, plays on an FPS or whatever, right? Yeah, okay. I guess it's cool, but it's like, I don't need it. I don't need it to have fun in the game. And then I, I saw what they were putting in the same kind of microtransactions and it was like special costumes and some of which I actually did like. I, I tried to get through this as best as I could without actually giving them any money. This is this is pretty messed up, but I was just like, I'm curious because I go on to some sites and I'm just like, I don't see any mods for this game. I don't even see any mods for Tekken 7. Until I realized, oh wait, I'm on the wrong modding site. And I found quite a bit, both for Tekken 7 and Tekken 8. Alright, so let me show this. Yeah, Jun costume, and it costs money. This is honestly my favorite costume for Jun Kazama. I really wanted the costume, but I also don't want to like cater to this. If I, if I give them my money, they win kind of thing. I wanted to definitely hold off on this and show that, yeah, people like me are not going to buy this stuff. I want to go on mods. It's just like, er, not even that. It wasn't even that. It was just like, I was looking, I was looking up like different costumes and everything. And then I saw this pop up and go, oh, there's a mod for Jun Kazama in Tekken uh, Tag 2. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, that exists? Huh. Cool. And I go, and I, I'm looking at it, and I go through the comments, because it's like, you know, sometimes, like, you look for mods, and this just doesn't work. Something breaks, or something just doesn't add up. And then modders have to go back and update it, obsolete. That's why I don't like getting certain mods day one, because it's just like a lot of stuff can very much, uh, like be malfunctioning or just doesn't work as well as it should so on and so forth i see a number of comments where it's just like oh uh are you sure about this people are worried about like posting the mods and everything i'm like why would they be worried about that it's harmless like you would have to have the game on pc and everything you have to pay for it in order to do this like, what is so harmless about it? This. I come across some of these messages. And these are people who have modded for Bandai Namco games, like Tekken 8. And they're saying, hell yeah, Namco started banning all mod videos. Everyone had fun so far. I might run away to Patreon, but for now, I'm going to take a break and see what happens. If you want my past mods, please come to my Discord server. And they, their channel, I think, has been taken off of YouTube. Last day check, this was... Again, this was back in, like, March. And their channel, I think, was taken off around April. Did they answer it or anything? No answer. And then I see this. 
Namco decided to take down my videos about Tekken Mods 4, 8, and I can't understand the reason. I've always created mods during Tekken 7, never had any problems, and this was the person who did the Junkazoma mod, and I'm like, are you... This is... This is actually serious. What the fuck, Namco? I'm getting pissed off at this. What the fuck is this company's problem? I'm OP. Two videos from IMOP got taken down. This isn't even a mod and doesn't even have download links. I wonder if they will copyright strike any gameplay videos that has mods or visual changes now. Me and my friends are pumped up because we were, we, were, we were actually getting real excited for Tekken 8 and everything. I'm looking at this and I'm like, yo, this is, this is beautiful. Like this is absolutely has like a lot of time and energy and effort. This is like, this feels like a love letter in a lot of ways. And all of us are like, great, this is good. I think Star came in and said, like, this is a lot of my dreams and everything. Like, we're getting, like, legitimately happy for this game because this is, this is legitimately, like, there's a, so much time and effort put into it. And then we see stuff like this, and it's just, like, Namco doing this. Not only that, doubling down and sending in, like, cease and desist letters to modding websites. This is messed up. And, it, and the worst part is, you would think, okay, so they have, like, a pinup or something on their website, or like a news bulletin, or something on a accessible website or platform where it's just like, th they have their rules clearly stated about modding, you know? It's like, uh, what was it? Atlas, right? Like, Atlas, like, there's that, uh, more infamous, infamous posting where it's like, yeah, you can't record this game past insert date here, in-game, and this has to be, like, in the next year. You can't record for video game stuff. That I think that's pretty much fallen out because more so now live streaming is a more common and accessible thing, case in point. So I, I think that whole thing with Atlas being like, you can't record past enter date here has kind of fallen off. But at the very least, you know, that's something. As, as infuriating to many people, understandably so, as infuriating, to, as infuriating to many people as it might be, right? It's at least some level of clarity some level of transparency it's just like okay uh we're not going to allow you to do this and you know it's like i like you know again infuriating as it may be it's at least some level of like keeping your player base informed and you know seeing stuff like this right being done by Bandai Namco, it's just like, okay, so they must, they must be, like, there There must be something, like, there's some guidelines, some clarity, some level of transparency towards the community and the player base, right? They wouldn't be doing stuff like this, just, like, not give any explanation, right? And they say absolutely nothing. I look at this and I'm like, I don't really feel comfortable actually promoting your game honestly anymore bandai like i'm sorry to the people who worked on it genuinely but i see stuff like this right i see stuff like this the fact that it's just gone radio silence just like i i genuinely am like i i don't feel comfortable actually promoting the game i don't feel comfortable even like streaming it even if it was just normal without any mods, I don't feel comfortable doing this shit. I don't. I've been sitting on that for like, I think a day and a half now. Look, I, I just wanted to play Tekken. I wanted to play Tekken and relive the nostalgia, which I have been. And it's just like, like, do I, do I go off and tell my friends, hey, this game that I've been amping everyone to get and everything, don't get it? Like, but then I thought, it's just like, who do I figure is doing this at the end of the day? Is it the developers who are making this game? I don't think so. Is it Harada? I seriously doubt it. If it's not the developers, right? And I don't think it even is, like, the director. Because, like, you know, you, you look at the director on, like, Twitter, and it's just, like, giving info about, like, what it takes to get guest characters on and everything. Yeah, it's, it's just, like, like, the dude loves... Tekken, and he actually has a lot of love and care put into it, so much so that he doesn't want to, like, carelessly, like, get fired, or get people fired over the, over this. 
So I get it, on some level, like, the dude actually has a labor of love for his game. I get it. Maybe it's not the devs, but this is the publishers who are doing this stuff. The publishers who are not only doing the microtransactions, but also taking down content, fan-made content of the community and everything. And I'm thinking, like, is that fair? Is that right? Is that so fair on the developers to punish them for what publishers are doing? I don't think so. You know, there's some stuff that publishers do that is pretty scummy anyway. Is there some level of compromise here? And to the best I can muster, I'd say there is. And so I made a review on uh, Tekken 8. I'm conflicted. I've been a Tekken fan most of my life ever since I played Tekken 1 on PS2. I heard a lot of people launch day say this game had so much what they of what they wanted in Tekken, and I was genuinely excited. Man. And now, Bandai Namco makes it impossible for me to genuinely try and enjoy this game. People can argue about the inclusion of simple controls and the various things that make or break this as a good game for any hardcore FGC player, but I just play Tekken to relive my nostalgia and vent some stress after life gives me the constant middle finger. So, I don't care too much about any of that. However, battle passes and microtransactions which alongside rewards and cosmetics that are honestly just 95% garbage, which if you saw what uh, they had for the last Battle Pass, dude, yeah, it's garbage. And it's kind of funny that I'm talking about this now, and it's funny how now the Battle Pass is just offline. Like, now you can't actually get the Battle Pass rewards. It's just that, the lack of response, time, and support regarding rage quitting and hacking, which that's a big problem with Tekken over the years. And especially, with, I think, with Aid as well. And the treatment and even censoring of the modding community and no transparency towards what the publishers are or aren't fine with in their games. That is something I can't overlook. And it, it just gets under my skin because it's just like... There's better way of go going about this. And there's better ways of telegraphing, hey, this is what you're fine with or not fine with when it comes to mods. And, like, ultimately, like, I look, I don't want to just speculate on to why they might have done this. Because, one, I don't want to give them an out. Two, I don't want to defend them. And three, it shouldn't be my job to speculate what they, what they are doing and what they should what they are doing and what they aren't doing with their games, they should just, they should know. They're a AAA game development company. PR is a part of the package. Just be transparent with your community and things should more so be a lot more clear on that front. But no. And it's a legitimate shame. And again, I say it's because underneath what Bandai has done both recently and for a long while now, Tekken 8, by all accounts, is a love letter to what so many people loved about Tekken growing up. The designs for the characters, an interesting, fun story campaign that shows a labor of love the devs have over the series. I'm not even finished with it, and I love the Tekken campaign. And even improving ideas from the past and doing them better here in a number of ways. Bringing back Jun Kazama a character I absolutely love from Tekken Tech 1 and 2. The jukebox to set music from prior Tekken games to stages and certain modes in 8. Again, something I genuinely love out of 8. Character customization, which, look, the character customization op options in 8 are kind of shit. That said, I mean, the fact that it's there, cool. You get, like, again, this is, this would be opportunities for people in the modding community to step up if, you know, Bandai Namco wasn't doing shit like striking down certain channels and trying to remove content. For what reason? I don't know. They haven't said anything. It would be nice if they were more transparent about that. But stuff like that, character customization, an online lobby that looks entirely like a mall for the FGC to hang out at, tech and ball, ghost battles, unlockable content, character endings. There is a lot of love put into this game. And simply on that alone, it's made me enjoy coming back 
to practice characters and mess around on my own in Tekken hours and Tekken for hours on end. Like, I cannot stress how much I am loving the hell out of Tekken at its core. Tekken 8 at its core, right? I just, I love Tekken 8 so much. And it's just like, it's a damn shame that Bandai Namco is out here taking down mods and copyright striking channels on YouTube and so on and so forth and removing videos on Twitter by the modding community for whatever reason they have, which they clearly have not given. They've gone radio silent on that end. Like, where the hell is the transparency? And I'm not saying that we have to have our cake and eat it too or anything or any of that crap. It's just like, again, like I said before, Atlas at the very least said, hey, uh, if you want to rec if you want to record and make gameplay out of this, you have to record past a certain date. People hated that, but at the same time, at the very least, people had that. People in the Tekken community and people who are buying Bandai Namco games, Bandai Namco games, right? They have nothing. Oh my god. But again, it's just like, there's so much love put into this game, and so much love put into Tekken 8, and it's just like, despite everything that's happened around Tekken 8 and what the publishers at Bandai, Bandai Namco have done, despite all of that, and, and despite what the publishers have decided to push on its player base alongside everything else messed up they've been doing or they've done, both recent and over the years, right? I personally still recommend getting Tekken 8 at the very least the base game. I, I legitimately have said this for other properties that Bandai Namco has done, as well as other stuff that other AAA game companies have done. Don't get the Deluxe, the Ultimate Edition, or whatever expanded tripe version they come out with. I don't care what your reasoning is. Don't get it. Because you are getting baited. Don't get these additions. Just get the base game. If you want the expanded DLC or whatever, get it when it's on sale. When the game ultimately goes on sale, get it. It's going to be costing less, yes, but I guarantee you it will be less of a blow to get these games when they're on sale as opposed to full price when they're over a hundred bucks, when they're, when some of them are over a hundred bucks too. I would say now, look, just, I love Tekken 8, and I would say if you are interested in fighting games and you're also a fan of Tekken, get it. Just don't be surprised if more predatory practices or anything else scummy Bandai tries comes out as the months go by. Like, if you want Tekken 8, and if you've seen my videos on it, get the game if you want it. Ignore the battle passes, the microtransactions, because, like I've said... The microtransactions, the battle passes, the microtransactions are scummy as hell, and the battle pass has, when it came out, it had some of the worst cosmetics Tekken has had in a long time. And that's not even a joke. It's pointless to get the battle pass e anyway, and even the microtransactions, because you don't need it to enjoy Tekken as is. DLC characters, that's, that's another story for another day, but... Stuff like cosmetics and whatnot, you, you don't really need that. I mean, to hell, Tekken's default costumes and everything are honestly pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie. Like, the devs, honestly, what they put into this game are fine. And also, some of the microtransaction cosmetics from, like, older Tekken games are cherry-picked. So, I, you know, I just would... Uh, look, personally, you have it from me, like... Ignore the battle passes, microtransactions, and mod the game if you find cosmetics you like by fans. Like, I don't care if you mod the game, and neither should Bandai Namco. If you've seen my stuff on Strive, you know how much fun I have with modding the games. You know how much fun I have with modding games. And if you and if I ever and if I do like time comes where it's like I do Left 4 Dead in the future, you'll see how much fun we have modding the game. Like, modding doesn't really hurt a game. If anything, it makes it that much more enjoyable to play. So yeah, I have no problem with modding the game. It's evident this game was developed with most players, new and even old, enjoying themselves in mind. 
I love this game, but Bandai can just sit on it and spin. I made that post yesterday, and I still stand by it. Where, legitimately, I was absolutely considering going, alright, maybe I should just take down my Tekken 8 stuff. But then I was like, I don't know, is that fair towards the developers who did this game? Like, they, I, I see so much of their love and effort put into it. I don't really think that's fair. But I think it is fair to, you know, buy the game, just not partake in any of any of like Bandai Namco's predatory practices. I don't know what the fuck Bandai Namco is gonna do in the in the coming months, honestly. But whatever they try to do, legitimately, either it is going to continue shooting themselves in the foot, digging themselves a grave, or nobody's gonna care about it. Genuinely, they're not gonna make money, if any, at all, towards it. Okay. 